Hello friends, today we will discuss the concepts of the chapter called assignment. Assignment is part of the quantitative techniques and uh, it's again a scoring chapter. If you understand it well, you can score good marks on it and uh, it's a chapter from which you generally do get a question. So um, let's understand them better. Assignment. So what is an assignment problem? Assignment problem is a special type of LPP, linear programming problem. So assignment is nothing but a special type of linear programming problem. Uh, it occurs, so assignment occurs when there are M jobs or products to be assigned to N persons or facilities. So I have say 100 products or jobs which I have to assign to say 20 or 25 person or facilities. So I am using the word, uh, the term M or the variables M and N and we say that the assignment occurs, assignment problem occurs when M jobs or products are to be assigned to N persons or facilities. An assignment problem will have an objective and the ob objective will be either profit maximization or cost minimization. So my ultimate objective is to either maximize the profit which is possible or minimize the cost that is uh, going to be incurred. So that is the objective, profit maximization or cost minimization. Now another concept that is very important for you to understand is whether the data is balanced or not. So we say that the data is balanced if M is equal to N. So M is the uh, products or the jobs and N is the persons or the facilities. So if both of these are equal, then the data is balanced. If they are not equal, then the data is known as unbalanced. So these were the basic concepts of assignment. Now we will get into the procedure. How do you solve an assignment problem? So these are the steps which are listed down. If you follow them properly, you will not have any kind of uh, uh, issue in trying to solve an assignment problem. So what is the first step? So when you solve an assignment problem, your first step should be to ensure that your objective is minimization, cost minimization. But just now in the previous slide, we discussed that an assignment problem can have two objectives, profit maximization or cost minimization. So the question comes, how will I ensure that my objective is minimization? Because it can also be profit maximization. So in the case of a profit matrix, if I'm given a profit matrix and it seems to be a profit maximization scenario, I have to convert it to an opportunity loss matrix. So an, a profit matrix is to be converted to an opportunity loss matrix by subtracting every number in the matrix from the highest number in that matrix. So if I have a matrix which has say 9 numbers, 3 rows and 3 columns, it has 9 numbers and the highest number in that is say 10 and the say the first number was uh, 8. So 10 minus 8, 2 is what I'm going to write. So I'm going to subtract each number from the highest number in the matrix to convert the profit matrix into an opportunity loss matrix to be able to fulfill my first step of minimization. So my objective should be minimization when I start solving a assignment problem. The second step is to ensure that the nature, nature of data is balanced. So what is balanced? We just discussed when M is equal to N, data is balanced. If M is not equal to N, data is unbalanced. So we have to verify that the data is balanced. What if the data is not balanced? If the data is not balanced, we will have to insert a dummy row or column with zero values. So if it happens to be a scenario that you have a row or a column with uh, which is, I mean, which you have to insert as dummy, then you have to do it with zero values. So if your data is unbalanced, do insert a dummy row to make it balanced with zero values. Once you ensure that your objective is minimization and uh, your data is balanced, then you go on to do a row operation. Now what is a row operation? Row operation is that in the given matrix, I'm going to subtract the smallest number of a row from all the elements in that row. So row operation is subtracting the smallest number in a row from all the elements in that row. You will understand these operations better when we do a sum, but do understand these steps first before we move on to a question. The next step is column operation. 
So column operation similar to row operation is subtracting the smallest number in each column from all elements in that column. So uh, we do the row. So first thing is we do check minimization. Objective is minimization. Second is we check that the data is balanced. Third we do a row operation. Fourth we do a column operation. Then we draw minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines to cover all the zeros in the matrix. How do we do this? More detailed steps. We pick a single zero in a row. So first thing we look at a row, which is the single zero. If I have a single zero, I box it and I will draw a line column wise. It's a single zero in a row, but I will draw the line column wise. After I finish looking at the rows, I will pick the single zero in a column and I will draw the line row wise and I continue this process till all my zeros are covered by lines and this is how I draw the minimum num number of horizontal and vertical lines to cover the zeros in the matrix. Now what is the optimal assignment? So optimal assignment is when your number of lines is equal to the order of matrix. If the number of lines is less than the order of matrix, then your assignment is not optimal. And then what do we do? So this is the check. Optimal assignment, we check whether the number of lines is equal to the order of matrix or not. If it is, if the number of lines is less than the order of matrix, then we have, uh, then what do we do? We first select the smallest number not covered by the lines in the matrix. So I have a matrix. I have some numbers covered by lines. Now the open items which are not covered, I select the smallest number from the, from the open items which is known as LOE, the least open element, the smallest open element, the smallest number that is not covered by the lines. The next step is that elements not covered by any lines minus the LOE. So this number that I have selected, I subtract this number from all the open elements. And the, after that, I add this LOE or this smallest number to all the elements that are covered by the intersection of two lines. So if I have a horizontal line and I have a vertical line on the matrix, the intersection is the uh, number which will be added with LOE. And the last will be repeat step 5. Step 5 was again drawing the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines, checking if the op assignment is optimal, continuing this process of LOE till I do not get an optimal assignment which is number of lines equal to the order of matrix. So these are the steps of assignment. At the end of this, the boxed elements that you get are the assignments. So the way you are boxing them, I mean, the, uh, the at the end in the optimal matrix, the boxed elements that you have are the final optimal assignments. Let's look at a question to help you understand this better. A company has four zones, four marketing managers available for assignment. So I have four zones and four marketing managers for assigning the zones. The zones are not equal in sales potential. It is estimated that potential annual sales in each zone would be. So potential sales are given for each zone. For east zone, it's 2,40,000. For west zone, it is 1,92,000. For north zone, it's 1,44,000. And for south zone, it is 1,20,000. The four marketing managers are also different in ability. And it is estimated that working under the same conditions, their yearly sales would be proportionate as under. So these are the proportions that are given for the uh, yearly sales of the managers. So for manager M, it is 8. So M is to N is to O is to P is 8 is to 7 is to 5 is to 4. So these are the proportions that are given. So if the total sales are the sum of 8 plus 7 plus 5 plus 4, then uh, 8 parts of that would be contribution of manager M. 7 would be manager N, 5 would be O, and 4 would be P. So in very simple words, it's the proportions. If the criteria is maximum expected total sales. So what I have to do is I have to try to get maximum expected total sales. I have to get the optimal assignment and the maximum sales. So the question is telling me that each zone, I have four zones, four managers. Each zone has a different selling potential. And each manager also has a different selling ability. So uh, I know the total possible sales in each zone. 
I know the proportion in which the managers can sell and now I have to find the assignment, the optimal assignment by which I can maximize my sales. So whom should I give which zone to be able to earn maximum sales? So that is the question. So what is the solution? So the first thing that I do is I have to do the sum of the proportion of the yearly sales of the manager. I have to find out how many parts were there total. So it comes to 24 parts. So manager M's contribution will be 8 by 24 part of the total sales, right? So that is what is done. Uh, taking 1000 as the unit effective matrix would be. So for the first uh, cell, so which is east zone. So in the east zone, if you see, 2,40,000 was the total possible sales. And the manager has an ability of selling 8 by 24. So 2,40,000 is my total sales possible in east zone. Manager M has my capability of 8 parts out of 24 parts. So 8 by 24 is his proportion. So if, so if, I, if I allocate east zone to manager M, then he can do an 80,000 uh, worth of sales. So the first cell which is uh, east uh, zone and M manager, it is 80,000. Similarly for west zone, if I allocate the west zone to manager M, it will be 1,92,000 into 8 by 24 which comes to 64. Similarly we compute the north and south. In the same manner if I allocate east zone to manager M, it will be 2,40,000 into 7 by 24 which comes to 70,000. So that is how uh, this, this calculation goes on and we get a matrix, the effective matrix that what are the possible sales if each zone is allocated to each manager. So this is the possible sales of each zone and manager combination. So that is the effective matrix. So if you notice in this question the matrix was also not given, we had to draw, the, draw up the matrix. This is the matrix that we had to draw up. So now this was a matrix of sales, right? So sales is nothing but we, we will always try to maximize sales. So it is a kind of a profit maximization kind of a matrix. We have to convert this to a minimization. That is the first criteria for assignment problem. And therefore to convert this sales matrix into a minimization problem, I will deduct each value. So each value from the highest value in the matrix. So if you see the matrix, the highest value in the matrix is 80. So I will deduct each value from 80. So 80 minus 80 will be 0, right? 80 minus 64 will be 16, the second column. Then 80 minus 48 will be 32. 80 minus 40 will be 40. Then manager M, east zone, 80 minus 70 will be 10. 80 minus 56 will be uh, 24. So this is how we convert the resultant, uh, we convert the maximization problem into a minimization problem. We convert the sales matrix, matrix into a loss matrix. So this is the resultant loss matrix that we derive by subtracting each of the values, each of the elements of the matrix with the highest element in that matrix. So this is my minimization criteria is taken care of. The next that we have to do is we have to check whether the data is balanced. So uh, M over here is east, west, north, south, which is zone, which is 4. And N is 4 managers, so 4 is equal to 4. So my data is balanced. Hence, I can move ahead with row operations. So row operation. What was row operation? Row operation was that I select uh, the smallest number in each row. And I deduct that from all the elements. So in the first row, my smallest number is 0. So I deduct 0 from all the elements and therefore my values of the first row remain the same. So 0, 16, 32 and 40. In the next row, 10 is the smallest element. So I deduct 10 from all of them. So 10 uh, becomes 0, 14, 28 and 35. Right? 0, 14, 28 and 35. Similarly, we do O and P. So in O, the smallest number is 30 and in P, the smallest number is 40. We deduct these from the elements of those rows respectively. And this is the matrix that we get after doing the row operation. So on this, we will do the column operation. Now what is column operation? It is deducting the smallest number in a column with all elements of that column. 
So if I look at the first uh, column, all values are 0. So the smallest value is 0 and nothing changes. So this row remains the same. In the next column, uh, the smallest number is 8. So I deduct 8 from all the other elements. So from 16, I deduct 8 to get 8. From 14, I deduct 8 to get 6. And from 10, I deduct 8 to get 2. So if you look at the second column, 8, 6, 2 and 0. Similarly, I deduct uh, similarly, I deduct 16 and 20, which are the smallest values in column 3 and 4, to deduct uh, from, the other from the other elements of those columns to get this matrix after column operation. So this is the uh, matrix that you will get after you complete the column operation. After this, the next step that we had to do was draw the minimum number of lines, horizontal and vertical, to cover all the zeros in the matrix. So now, how, how are we supposed to do that? We were supposed to do that by uh, selecting the single zero in a row. So if you see over here, the single zero in a row is this, right? So I box this zero and so single zero in a row, I box it and then I draw a line column wise, right? So now all my zeros in this first three rows are gone. Now I'm only left with the last row and there is no single zero in the last row there is more than single so now i go to the columns so in the second column if you see i have the single zero in this column so i box this and i draw a line row wise so i cover all the uh, all the zeros with minimum number of lines which is 2 now i have to check so this is the uh, matrix that I get and the lines that I get and then I have to check whether the number of lines is equal to the order of matrix. However, my order of matrix is 4 and my number of lines is 2. So the number of lines is less than the order of matrix. Therefore, what do I have to do? I have to do that LOE process and come back to this. So now what is the LOE over here? What is LOE? Least open element. What is least open element? So the numbers which are not covered those numbers, uh, the smallest out of those, so it is 2 over here in this case. So LOE over here is 2. After identifying the LOE, what I do is I deduct all the numbers, open numbers with the LOE. So 8 minus 2 will give me 6, 16 minus 2 will give me 14 and so on. I will get these numbers, 6, 6 14, 18, 4, 10, 13, 0, 2 and 3. I deduct 2 from all the open elements and I get those numbers. And only at the intersection of the two lines, I have to add the LOE. So intersection of two numbers is this one, which is uh, 0. So I add LOE, which is true, and this becomes true for me. So if you see over here, I have 2, and I have the open elements were deducted by 2. After doing this, I have to again draw the lines. So if you see, again, in my first uh, row, I have a single 0. I box that, and I draw this line right then in the second uh, uh, so uh, again in the second row I have no zeros left then I look at the columns so again if I look at the columns the single zero in a, in a column is this one so I draw this line row wise now I'm left with one more zero which is this one so this becomes again my single zero in this column because this is already covered so I box this and I draw this line. All my zeros are covered now and I have minimum number of lines which is 3 uh, to cover all the zeros. I again compare it to the order of matrix. My order of matrix is 4, my number of lines is 3 and therefore I have still not reached the optimal assignment. So what will I do? I will again look, try to identify the LOE. So the numbers which are open, out of that the LOE is 4. 4 is the least open element, the smallest number that is not covered by the lines. So 4 is my least open element. I deduct 4 from all the open elements. So 6 minus 4, the first one becomes 2. 6 minus 4 becomes 2. 14 minus 6, 18 minus, uh, sorry, 18, 14 minus 4 becomes 10. 18 minus 4 becomes 14. 4 minus 4 is 0. 10 minus 4 is 6. And 13 minus 4 is 9. So that those are the, uh, if you look at these numbers, those are the numbers that I get. Everything else remains the same except for my intersection of lines. 
So I have two intersection of lines over here, which is uh, this and this. So I add the LOE over here and I get uh, 2 plus 4, 6 and 0 plus 4, 4. So this is the matrix that we get uh, by doing the LOE operation. After that, we draw the minimum lines to cover the zeros. Again, we go look at the process. So this is again my single zero in the row. I draw this line. I box it and I draw this line. The next is that again I have this as my single zero in this uh, row. So I box it and I draw this line. And then again I have this zero as a single zero in the column and therefore I draw the line row wise. I again have three lines and order of matrix is four. All my zeros are covered. The minimum lines to cover the zeros is three. Order of matrix is four. Hence, I have still not reached my optimal assignment. So I have to continue to repeat the process of LOE. So now again, out of this open elements, I will identify the LOE. What is LOE? LOE is the least open element, which is two over here. And out this two, again, I will deduct from all the open elements. So 10 minus two will become eight, 14 minus two will become 12, six minus two, nine minus two, two minus two, zero, and three minus two, one. So those are the six numbers which I had over here, right? So those are the six numbers. I add uh, two to the intersecting points. So which is six plus two, eight, and zero plus two, two. So if you see over here, those are the, that is the matrix that I get. Now again, I have to draw the minimum number of lines to cover the zeros. So what do I do? So this is the, again the first single zero in the row. I draw a line column wise, right? Then uh, I come to the second one. This again becomes my single zero in a row. So I draw this line column wise. Now I have no more zeros left in the rows. So this is my single zero, uh, so sorry, this is the first one, single zero in a column. I box it and I draw this line. Then I'm left with this single zero in the column and I draw the line row wise. So these are the four zeros that I get and I have four lines to cover the zeros. So my order of matrix is four. My number of lines is also four. Therefore, this assignment is optimum. So what is this assignment? So the boxes are the assignment. So I'm going to consider those boxes as the optimal assignment. So it's a combination of giving the east zone to manager M, giving the west zone to manager N, giving the north zone to manager O, and giving the south zone to manager P. So that is the optimal assignment of the zones to the managers. So we had to also find the optimal assignment and the maximum sales. So at manager M east, it was 80,000 of sales. If you, if you remember this over here. So east zone, manager M, 80,000. West zone, manager M, 56,000. North zone, manager O, 30,000. And south zone, manager P was 20,000. So that is what we total up to get the total maximum sales. 80,000 for manager M, east zone, N, west zone, A 56,000, O manager, north zone, 30,000, and P manager, south zone, 20,000. So that is what I get. These are my maximum possible sales of 1,86,000. So uh, this was a typical assignment problem where a question is given. It is a maximization problem. We minimize it. We check whether the data is balanced or not. We conduct a row operation. We conduct a column operation. We draw the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines to cover all the zeros. Then we check if the number of lines is equal to the order of matrix. If not, we do the LOE operation and then again draw the lines to check if the number of lines is equal to the order of matrix. And we continue this till the order of matrix is equal to the number of lines. When this optimal test is passed, then the number of the boxes that you have are the optimal assignments. And uh, that is what we have done over here. I hope uh, you had a good time understanding this and uh, you will be able to solve uh, other questions on this on your own because uh, the questions on uh, this are very similar. You will be given a matrix and objective. You have to follow these steps and you have to conclude it. So that is how you will solve an assignment problem. Thank you.